couple of things come back when you do anchor testing. MPO, MPR3 antibodies, a C anchor or a P anchor. And sometimes you can have one that's positive whilst the other's not positive and it can be super confusing. And also why are we sending all the tests and what do they actually mean? Hello Dr. Humans and welcome back to the channel. In today's video where we're going to be trying something a little bit different. And I mean, the truth is <laughs> that I went to do my video in the usual way. I had this whole thing set up, but it wasn't working. Microphone, everything, just, it was just not my day. I just, the setup was not happening. So I thought we would try a new setup and have a play around with this because I would actually like to do a lot more kind of live sessions with you guys, or at least record live so I can put out more videos. So this is probably the universe's way of saying you need to change what you're up to, Christine. So what I thought I'd do today as a little experiment, I wanted to teach you guys about the anchor vasculitis test. You suspect someone's got vasculitis or maybe glomerulonephritis and you'll send off anchor testing. And a couple of things come back when you do anchor testing. So you get the MPO, MPR3 antibodies, and you also get this uh, report that tells you whether it's a C anchor or a P anchor. And sometimes you can have one that's positive whilst the other's not positive and it can be super confusing. And also why are we sending all the tests and what do they actually mean? So that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's do this. So when it comes to anchor vasculitis, you might be aware anchor stands for anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. So it's really just saying that there are antibodies against something that normally lives inside that neutrophil. Now the immune system doesn't obviously find it inside the neutrophil, it will find it when it's sort of, when the neutrophil throws it out there during an immune response on its little nets, okay? So, but when the neutrophil is calm, these things are living inside the neutrophil. I'm about to draw a neutrophil under pressure. <laughs> Hopefully it looks like a neutrophil. I've had some interesting experiences with whiteboards in my time. All right, so this looks a bit like a neutrophil. <laughs> That's good. There will be these things inside. We're going to have ones around the nucleus, the perinuclear ones, and we'll have these ones here, cytoplasmic. I'm sure there's lots of these, but the ones that we're interested in when it comes to anchor vasculitis, there's two main ones, little antigens inside the neutrophil that are of interest. And the one that's inside the cytoplasm is called PR3. And the one that is perinuclear um, around the nucleus, that one is MPO, myeloperoxidase. And the way you can remember which is which is basically because C is the third letter of the alphabet. So C anchor, we're talking about PR3. MPO, we're talking about perinuclear. So that's the sort of broad things that can spark off the ankyvasculitis. So in ankyvasculitis, there'll be antibodies, not always, but most of the time, antibodies against one of these, and that will be in involved in the pathological process. So we're going to send off those tests, but the way we send off the tests is a little bit interesting. So like I mentioned before, you're going to get either the report for C anchor and P anchor, as well as the report for whether you have MPO or PR3. So why do we do both and what do they actually mean? Let's check that out now. So when it comes to anchor testing, we have non-specific testing and we have specific testing. And the non-specific testing is basically immunofluorescence. So what happens here, um, and historically, this was the first way we used to test for these antibodies. We would take a sample of the patient's serum and we send it to the lab. And in the lab, they have neutrophils just ready to go. Normal neutrophils from normal humans. Somehow they've got a wee store of neutrophils. I don't know how, but they do. All right. So we've got some neutrophils and they have been alcohol fixed neutrophils. So they're kind of like open <laughs> neutrophils, I guess. You could put stains and stuff on them. But here we go. So we've got some neutrophils on a little dish in the lab. And then we add our patient serum to these neutrophils. And if this person has any antibodies against those little antigens inside the neutrophils, then they might stick. And if they did stick, then when we wash this um, little plate, they're going to stay on there. 
And then we add anti-human IgG to this little dish and that will bind to these antibodies. And then we can light this up with immunofluorescence. So these have got little fluorescent uh, molecules attached to them. We can see them under the microscope. So this is basically going to show you if you have antibodies in your patient's serum that are directed against some part of this neutrophil. But it's not going to tell you exactly which part of the neutrophil that it's targeting, right? It's only going to tell you the rough sort of geographical location of where the antibodies stuck. So that might be in the cytoplasm. It might be around the nucleus, but it's not going to tell you much more than that. So this non-specific immunofluorescent testing is going to tell us if we've got a C anchor, we can see those antibodies around the cytoplasm, or a P anchor, we can see those antibodies around the nucleus, and that's it. It doesn't tell you what the specific antigen is. And let me tell you, neutrophils have a lot of things going on in there. So just because you have a C anchor or a P anchor positive doesn't mean you have anchor vasculitis. It just means that you've got a C anchor or a P anchor that's positive. And actually this can show up in a lot of different autoimmune diseases. So people with an, a, a history of various autoimmune disease, connective tissue disease, they just have these positive C anchors or P anchors. They're not necessarily suffering from anchor vasculitis, but it's just part of their autoimmune phenotype. So sometimes you can see that in other autoimmune diseases. So that's your non-specific testing. That's your immunofluorescence. But we also have specific testing, and this is where your molecules come in. So you've got your MPO and your PR3 and antibodies against them. So here we're doing like specific ELISA tests, specific antibody tests to pick up the specific antibody this person has in their serum. So it's nothing to do with sticking things to the neutrophil, it's literally just taking their blood sample and checking what antibodies are there in their bloodstream and they're finding out if they have an, an MPO or a PR3. Now, another caveat to this is you can absolutely have anchor vasculitis and not have any antibodies at all. That is absolutely possible. It's very annoying, but it's possible and happens in 10% of cases. But 90% of the time, you'll be able to pick up um, a positive anchor in someone who has anchor vasculitis. So that was just a really quick YouTube touch base. I hope it helped to study these and to clinical practice. And of course, if you are studying for your written exam, you're going to want to be in my world a lot in the next few months. There's a lot of things going on, <laughs> starting with the free GN tutorial. Then there's the Reno for the Written program. Stay tuned. I will be releasing the interview challenge in the coming months. And I also have a webinar, a transplant teaching webinar that you're absolutely invited to join. It's on Sunday, the 18th of August. If you are interested in hanging out with me for an awesome workshop where we unpack transplant for your exams, then be sure to click that link and sign up below. It's absolutely free and I would love to see you there. So thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have a great week. Bye.